What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Defense 3 Playoffs. Finally, they're here. No more tiebreakers, no more group stage muddled giant messes of spider webs and stuff like that. We are in the playoffs. This is the loser's bracket. Teams do not want to be sent home, but we are going to have somebody sent home right now today. This is game one of a best of three series between 4FC and Absolute Legends Academy. And with me is Shred Kid. If you have not heard of Shred Kid, he is a frequent Reddit poster, and he was also my co cast for quite a bit of time until real life obligations took over, but now he's back. So, what's up, dude? Yeah, I'm done with real life for a little bit. I'm going to play some Dota. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been following both of these teams in the defense, and I didn't know that much about either of them, but I was pleasantly surprised with both the how, or how they both played. Um, they both had some. Honestly, some innovative stuff that I saw them do. So, you want to start this replay? Yep. So, we're un going to unpause in 3, 2, 1. Unpause. Now, 4FC is a Swedish team. They've been around for a while, ever, ever since Dota 1, even. They impressed teams at DreamHack, impressed teams at Thor Open. And, you know, they're always one of those sort of C to B tier, B -tier teams that have so is been you know on the uprise and always have people wondering all right why aren't these guys sponsored they're always doing very very well but hopefully they can perform well even though they are in the losers bracket you know al academy this is like an experimental project that the manager samology is doing most of them are from iceland and you know it's cool that al is doing something like this their dota 2 division even though their starcraft 2 division seems to be under a bit of fire their dota 2 division <laughs> from all intents and purposes seem to be very legit so shout outs to al yeah, Ailes had some problems with their uh, their organization as a whole. Although for the most part, they've always seemed to sign pretty good players. At least in Dota, I can't speak on other esports, but in Dota, their players have usually just been pretty good. It's just you know maybe the team has to disband because of financial reasons or whatever. But like I said, I don't know that much about these guys. But just based on Ailes' history of signing pretty good people who aren't that well known, and uh, the few things that I have seen of them, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring this game. And we are going to see an incredibly standard Wisp first ban and then Coddle second ban. Um, most teams with the second ban prefer to ban Nyx and Bat, is what most teams do. But Coddle's just, he offers so much. I mean, I'm not even going to go into it. Teams don't want to deal with it. He does so much and teams are like, I don't even want to deal with this. So basically they're saying, you can have Nyx or Bat Rider. And with the Magnus ban, they actually say, okay, we're going to leave both of them in the pool and now you're going to have to pick. And yep. now they're actually going to give him Nyx Assassin, which is, you don't see this very often. Well, it could also be a Darkseer. Darkseer still placed relatively highly. Um, kind of glad to see Undying sort of fade out, because I think he was still a bit overrated. But I think uh, Darkseer NA, like you mentioned, probably the best choice here. But yeah, just to give a little bit more background information for FC, we're stuck in a group with Dignitas Empire. They were 5-2, and two, but Dignitas and Empire were both 6-1. and one. So 4FC unfortunately went to lose bracket. Meanwhile, AL Academy was stuck in a group with Mouse, which went 7-0. And one other really strong team, Team Liquid, which went 5-2. and two. Or no, yeah, Team Liquid and Virtus Pro, which also had pretty solid records. So AL Academy, unfortunately, loses bracket as well. So even though they've lost a couple of times, they're in pretty tough groups. So it's unfortunate that one of these teams will get some. But 4FC going to pick up the NA. So probably going to see maybe a Darkseer and some other support here. Yeah, Darkseer is a pretty decent pick against Nyx Assassin. Just because if you're sending a long laner against Nyx, he is one of the better choices. Um, the mana burn does suck against for anybody, but it sucks a little bit less for him. And they are going to pick up the darks here. Here's the deal with the Shadow Demon opening. Um, a lot of times picking up a Shadow Demon early can deter you from picking carries or even mids who are easily ganked. Because Shadow Demon is such a good smoke ganker, you can just come mid once or twice with a smoke gank and just shut down the enemy's mid entirely. So basically, you're making them pick a certain type of mid here with the Shadow Demon pickup also. It's really good against Nyx Assassin, because when Nyx is running at you with Spike Carapace, and you're like, oh no, what are we going to do? You just disrupt them and walk away. So, I really like this, these uh, pickups from AL. Meanwhile, 4FC can respond with Lone Druid, a uh, pretty standard carry who's difficult to kill. Uh, I mean, Shadow Demon makes it pretty much easy for anybody to be killed, but they're also going to pick up Lifester as well. And usually when I see an NA, Bounty Hunter is usually placed in pretty high priority for one of these teams. But Bounty Hunter is going to be left out of the equation, so it's probably going to be Lone Druid offlane or mid lane. And Lifestyle is safe lane. So Darkseer is one of those heroes who can be laned a multitude of different ways. Could be mid lane, could be off lane. Laundry is sort of similar to that as well. But 4FC so far have a team that's going to be pretty difficult to bring down. Even if they don't have anything that can sort of lock Darkseer in place. 
Yeah, um, Lone Druid's obviously hard to kill with his plus whatever HP it is, true form. Um, not to mention, it's just hard to kill in lane because of the bear pulls. Life Stealer's impossible to kill, Mix Assassin's pretty hard to kill. Uh, Spike Carapace is a little bit absurd. So that's going to be an issue that Ale is going to have to deal with. However, the issue with 4FC's draft right now that I'm looking at is they're not going to have any ways to necessarily hold people in place during fights. Um, Shadow Demon and Darkseer are going to give you mobility throughout fights. Like if someone gets gone on, Shadow Demon disrupts and then their slower stun is going to wear off, um, which is pretty good against Lifestealer. And then Darkseer can obviously surge them away. The issue that they're going to run into, I think, is Ale right now has the option of just trying to mass out team fight them, and 4FC might have to respond with that. So we might see an Undying pick up here, but I think it's more likely that we'll see something like a Luna, because if Ale doesn't get a carry right now, 4FC is just going to ban out all the carries that they fear. That is definitely uh, very... Yeah, very succinct, as I couldn't really respond with anything. But yeah, just so we want to expand on that team fight potential... Uh, again, all of these heroes so far are going to be mostly in melee form. Lone Druid, of course, will be melee. And Darkseer just sort of thrives on that. He thrives on getting people in giant, sort of giant ball where you can set up all your engagements. And because all these heroes are melee, they're going to be set up for a beautiful AoE ultimate if AL County does decide to go for it. So far, I see are in a bit of danger of being kited around. They only have one stun thus far, which is reliable. But still, they have a lot of picks left. And AL Academy going to pick up the Venge. Uh, not too sure about this pickup. I mean, she ganks all with Shadow Demon. She gives her team a nice aura and swap, of course, very, very useful. But, I mean, who are you going to swap? I guess this might just be a preventative pick. Like, say, all right, if you're going to choose something like Enigma, then you're not going to choose it anymore. But I'm not too sure about this Venge pickup in general, other than ganking with the Shadow Demon. Okay, here's almost certainly what I would say it's for. Um, I don't think it's necessarily for, you know, trying to protect an Enigma or some other channeler or something. Because most people don't even bother protecting Enigma anymore. They say, if you hit the black hole, that's great. But we really just want you for your mech and pushing power. And black hole might only need to be, you know, a second or two. However, when I was saying that 4FC is going to have trouble actually hitting people, this is just, I really, this is why I really like this. This is what I said, you know, they might do something creative. You're trying to get, so imagine you're a life stealer or Nyx or Lone Druid and you're running at somebody and they're slowed. Well, if they're slowed, Dark's just going to sprint them away. Sprint them away. So they're going to have to be stunned by Nick's Assassin. Shadow Demon disrupts them. Um, and if they're still getting gone on at that point, Venge can just swap them away. I think what Ale's trying to do is just move around the fights more than 4FC can. Um, which could be a good strategy, but right now, honestly, they need more damage. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, it's all well and good to move around, but then they can just sort of run up to your tower and hit that if you can't really bring them down. Uh, Lifestar, of course, is going to be very, very difficult to kill, as is with the Rage, if he does get carried around. Same with the Lone Druid. And we see, like you predicted, 4FC banning out those hard carries that they don't want to deal with. I mean, it's obviously they're not going to pick up Phanalancer themselves, so they're just going to remove it from the equation altogether. Phanalancer, of course, does very well against both these heroes, pretty much against everybody these days. <laughs> but yeah. AL going to ban out the Chen, saying that, okay, right now you have zero range, no jungle presence thus far. We're going to try to get rid of some of the early game pressure because you want to win the mid game so far. And we're probably going to go for ultra late game. I don't know, like you said, what could AL pick up here that could really dish out damage and sort of stab to both Lone Droid and Life Stealer and not get completely owned? I would like to see a Puck, to be honest. Um, Puck does deal damage now after the you know her changes, her recent buffs. Um, and she's just going to be able to... She can just do whatever she wants without fear so far against this lineup. I wanted to talk real quick, though, about the Tinker and Chen bands. This, I love these bands so much because those two heroes are both really good tower um, sieging heroes with March of the Machines, with the Chen, you know, full army and heals. It's really easy to attack towers with those heroes. And what AL wants to do is, like I said, you know, the kite, whole kite around thing, run away. So if they ban up the siege and attack the tower heroes, which they just did, um, it's going to basically mean that they're going to be able to fight more. Uh, they're not going to be pinned to a tower and not able to run away from it, is what I'm trying to say. Meanwhile, Rubik is going to be a choice. 
not the best spells we stone, but still pretty solid spells nonetheless. I mean, if you steal something, go swap, vacuum, of course, vacuuming everybody in there, surge if you surge up the bear, uh, purge, disruption, etc., etc., soul catcher, even. It's all Magic really good spells. Magic missile, pretty legit, too, yeah. Magic cool. missile. And AL, Kami gonna pick up the void, so there goes your damage, but the question is, can you provide enough damage? Uh, in time because it will take a lot of time for Void to get enough farm to sufficiently deal with both Lundruid and Life Stealer. So that could be a slight issue for AL County, but it seems like they overall have a pretty solid late game. Uh, team fight, of course, Dark Seer vacuum into Chrono, and they have decent gank, so it looks like they're just going for a jack of all trades lineup, it seems to me. Yeah, I would I would probably agree with that. And with the two support heroes, this is look looking to be a defensive tri lane. Dark is gonna either mid or off lane. Um so left in the pool for them I value Puck very highly as a hero more than most people. I would put a Puck mid, but um, either way, they got a lot of options. You could go for the Bounty Hunter and just try to pick off, because when you have two carries like them, someone's going to end up getting picked off. But uh, 4 is going to round out their lineup with a Windrunner, which I really like. Um, Windrunner is probably going to go mid, uh, Lone Druid off lane, and then it's defensive tri lane for 4 FC. I don't know about offensive tri laning that lineup against the Shadow Demon because it'll just disrupt whoever's gone on. Uh, and AL, I don't know what they're necessarily going to do. They have a lot of options. They're going to pick up their mid in the form of Viper. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. They just want to, yeah, they just want to slow the people down. All the, those melee heroes who just have to run up to hit people. Keep in mind, Viper, Viper Strike Ultimate does go through Nyx's Rage, slows down his attack speed, slows down his movement speed, and makes it very difficult for Nyx to be uh, sort of up close in your face where he loves to be. And of course, you know, once he gets there, he has to deal with the Void, so you just sort of slow down Nyx through the Rage, sort of forget about that, wait out the Rage, and once the Rage is down, you just burst him down to no end. So, so far, Viper Pick seems to make a bit of sense. But when choose the players and the teams very soon, I'll go with 4FC as they're going to be playing on the rain side. So we are going to have Nose playing the Windrunner, Curly is playing the Lundred, Boomski is playing the Nyx, Strangy is playing the Lifestyler, and Eris Loco is playing the Rubik. And on the Dire side, we're going to have Linku on the Viper. We're going to have the Pandasaurus Rex on the Shadow Demon. On Ventral Spirit, we'll have Acid Rain. Darkseer will be played by the Stand-In by the name of Fire. And finally, the Farming Void will be played by Chromium. Very appropriate, because Chronos here and Chromium, yeah, of course. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Man, that <laughs> next level synergy as have fun, have fun. This is still game one, so, you know, both teams under a bit of pressure, but even if they lose this game, they still have one more game to go through. So, it's not yet do or die, but it's getting pretty close, as looks like AO going very, very aggressively, trying to place out some mords, trying to prevent creep pulls, or just mm -hmm. overall hoping to catch somebody. But it looks like it is going to be Lone Druid, Solbot, and an aggressive trialing up top. And you said you didn't really like this too much because of disruption being a factor, but what do you think about it now? Um, I still don't like it. What they have the option of doing is using all of the mana burns on the Shadow Demon always. Uh, and if they can keep the Shadow Demon at, you know, not having mana, then you might be able to kill someone. But you're not going to be able to kill the Void. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to kill anybody with the Shadow Demon to begin with. I think it's kind of a waste of an aggressive try line, to be honest. And I think he's going to get out-farmed. Uh, Nyx is, of course, a great offensive tri laner, but I think with the Rubik and the Nyx against this particular lineup, it's not necessarily great. Well, I think it's a good idea to just shut down the Void, because honestly, Viper, I love the hero, but I'm very bad with him, because, you know, after the early game, he just kind of sucks. He's very slow. He's sort of, uh, you know, he needs a lot of tanks so he can survive in order to deal out the most damage, and he needs a lot of damage in order to sort of deal the damage in order to get them down to low HP. So Viper can't really do it all. He's a very powerful lane presence. He's a good anti nakes counter, sort of. But still, I mean, if you pressure the Void, then there's really not too much to worry about, at least for the mid game for the side of 4FC. That is true. Um, if, if Viper spirals out of control, obviously that's going to be a thing, but good teams probably aren't going to let that happen. Uh, there are ways to stop Viper spiraling out of control. Mostly just having someone show up when he's healing someone. <laughs> That's true. Or TP out if you solo gank. But, yeah. you know, talking about Viper in a team fight sense. As Windrunner does do decently against Viper, I feel like. Has Still a win. bit of extra range. Has a spamful nuke. And can win run a lot of Viper's harassing. So Viper, not going to have the best time in this lane. But again, I think it's mostly just to, again, anti sort of... Just to sort of cut around all these melee heroes on the side of 4FC. And meanwhile, Void already having a little bit difficulty in terms of farming, but still, this is only one and a half minutes in the game. Let's not go too crazy. Yeah, um, it's unlikely that AL is going to try to force any kill attempts simply because they don't have an aggressive tri lane. But 
Void, if he gets a four man shield up, he should be safe for from well a lot of stuff, to be honest. Um Rubik attacks aren't gonna hurt him. The only thing that'll seriously hurt him will be the Nakes attacks. And uh like I said, he can just run away or the Shadow Demon disrupt him away. Uh let's yeah, what's the Nakes? Nakes is CSing pretty well. So if Nakes gets an early phase boots up in like a trial situation, it can be really, really scary. But we are seeing Dire Side utilize the pulls. They have their sentry ward out, they're utilizing the pulls, so they're gonna have a little bit of a level advantage. And if Venge can get level three, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Yep, Rain doing it likewise, gonna kill a nice GC Sailor Hell car. hundred gold going into the pocket of Strangby. You'll definitely appreciate that. We'll see if he goes for mine. probably not just going to go probably into those phase boots that we see so often on the life story these days. Meal and Darks are going to cut off the creep wave bottom, and there's really not too much Lone Druid could do. But unlike most K's, Lone Druid doesn't really care. He has two heroes. He has a bear. He has a panda bear. And it is adorable. Yeah, you don't have to worry. <laughs> it really is. I love that panda bear so much. It makes me wish that I actually liked playing that hero. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to worry about your tower taking too much damage if a dark seer is creep cutting you, um, because it's just whatever. I have a bear, so um, for the most part, I don't think that there's this is like the kill non-aggressive zone right here. This is just like World War One standing off against each other, battle of the trenches, and nobody really wants to fight each other. As well, looks like Windrunner is gonna bow DD rune, and that's gonna make life a bit difficult for Viper. Yeah, that's gonna suck. Windrun harass. You can just Windrun up, like even up into the tower, and try to hurt him. Um, yeah, that's Viper's not going to do well mid lane off of that. Nope, as looks like another century has been placed to block off that pole camp, saying, we are going to win this try, no matter what you try to do. And Strangby is going to get his farm continue to roll up. So, so far, game seems pretty neutral, but I think Rain might have a slight edge, because, I mean, Lone Druid versus Darkseer in terms of farm. You'd rather have Lone Druid get some farm, but Darkseer definitely benefits from it a lot. Windrunner versus Viper, it looks pretty even. Viper actually has a slight edge, but Windrunner will have rune control. Really? Viper is out CSing her? Okay. That's good to know. Um, something I wanted to point out, I think Nyx might have made a mistake in this lane. A lot of times when you have a lane uh, with a Nyx Assassin that's aggressive, um, it doesn't win at level 1. Because you need 2 levels on Nyx to really start doing things, and 3 to really start doing things. Just have 1 in each. But the point is, if you're not going to go on people as Nyx Assassin, a lot of times you want to skill the Mana Burn at level 1 in, a, in an offensive trial lane situation. Um, just so that when you do go on them at level 2, they can't do anything. But it looks like we're going to have a gank mid coming out, or at least some warding. Uh, the Shadow Demon Vendrome combo is coming in. Yeah, interesting ward, seeing both sides of the river as they actually smoked up and stood there for quite a bit. But, I mean, the trialing definitely alerted the fact to Winrar, hey, you might be in a bit of trouble, and Winrar is level 5. Definitely can escape from last situation, as Panasaurus Rex is level 3, so has 2 points into the Soul Catcher build. And meanwhile, that is going to allow Void, not really getting harassed too much, but is going to limit his farm quite severely. As there is going to be initiation on the Windrunner, but she escapes super easily with the Windrun. Um, that's going to help Viper out a little bit, but, I mean, they're costing him a Void and a lot of time by the supports. Yeah, and the thing is, they're still equal on level. Like, they didn't even zone her out of experience range that equally. Oh, and her power shot just misses the salve. But, um, once Viper hits 6, there might be a kill attempt. But what you normally do in that case as a mid if you are worried about dying, you just TP back to your tier 2 tower and then just go back to land. Shouldn't yeah, be a huge Viper thing. level 1, Viper strike, pretty significant cooldown, 80 seconds. Um, once it gets Agnims, of course, 12 seconds at level 3, but that's Oh, Courier bot lane. Courier bot lane. Oh, is... it's got a surge on it. I didn't think it had a surge. Our hero was going to try to dive for it, but he pulled off when they surged it. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit unfortunate for the Darks here, as he has the Soul Ring, probably going to go into the and Mecha build these days. Meanwhile, Curly, will we see Maelstrom or Radiance? Not really too many Blink Dagger initiations, so we might be more possible to see a Maelstrom rather than the Radiance build. But still, Radiance still a very good item, and can definitely help Bulldoze down the towers a bit easier than something like a Maelstrom can. I think I would like to see a Maelstrom just because it'll let you do things earlier. Maybe, obviously, Radiance is going to be good against the low HP pools, but I want the Silver to do something earlier than he would with a Radiance, um, just because I don't think that they should let Void get out of control. Anyway, we're seeing another smoke gang coming with that Shadow Demon Vendrum. It looks like they're going for bot lane. Um, let's see if there are TPs in the top supports. Um, yeah, there is going to be a TP on Nyx Assassin, so they may turn into a bigger fight, we'll see. Shadow Demon luckily picks up the invisibility rune, gonna get the disruption onto Windrunner, here comes the terror, and the Soul Catcher gonna stun Windrunner right in place and gonna easily kill her for the first blood. Nicely done, at least making the second smoke uh, work out. It is costing them 
uh, void some farm, but still, AL to finally accomplish something with that smoke, definitely going to help out the morale of AL, and also give them a bit of room, and give Viper a bit of room, meanwhile, Chromium is going to get harassed by Strangby quite a bit, should be okay, no stunts to back him up, and won't even bother time walking away. Yeah, and at this point, they really, really have abandoned the void, um, whereas 4FC is keeping their supports close to the Nyx, because they really want to get him farmed, uh, simply because he's an early carry, he really does benefit from snowballing, um, AL isn't really doing that. They're saying, hey, you know, whatever, if you get behind, you'll, you can always catch up later because you won't be doing anything anyway. So we're just going to try to win other lanes. And it looks like they're going to go on him. There's going to be a Nick stun. Rubik's going to throw him up into the air. Um, he is going to stun his creeps, and he'll leap over the trees. Uh, Nyx is going to come around from the right. We see Rubik from the left. Ooh, he's going to suicide. suicide. Yeah, he's buying his items, and he's going to try to suicide. I don't know if he is. <laughs> they don't even know he's there. Backtrack OP. <laughs> And actually, he's dead for 20 seconds. That's a bit unfortunate, but at least he bought everything. He spent <laughs> but still. all of his money and suicided. You know what? That might even be worth it. Just what? because he'll get back he'll get back to lane with full HP. He That's didn't have true. a solve on him at the time. That's true. Even if he had, he could have gotten in the way and gone back to base. That was more efficient to do what he did. So that's some smart play. And Rain are like, oh, it's 1-1. One to -one. Nah, it's just still 0-1. to -one. You know, Neutral's got that kill. And Rain weren't even in the range to get any additional gold, so that's a bit unfortunate for them. But again, that's all. Uh, life's good to free farm. You know, Void is pretty much getting doubled up. And only Darkseer is really farming super well. It's going to be engaged in. Disruption going to catch off Windrunner's TP. Super unfortunate for Nose, as she is going to die super easily. As Linku does get the last hit, going to get blocked in by those Windrunner illusions for a little bit. But it looks like Viper going to have a solid start thus far. And the question is, what will he go for? Will he go with the tank build, or will he go a bit more aggressive? Maybe something like an early Yasha to be uh, a bit more faster? I'm not too sure. Probably going to go for the Saren tank build, but I don't know how that will work out in this game. Um, to be honest, Viper is one of those heroes who just so who is so flexible, um, and you can do so many things with him. Most players who end up playing him just end up doing getting sort of a these are the two builds that I do on him, and that's what I do. Uh, just because there are so many options, I think Linku is going to try to play him as a little bit more of a farmer this game, uh, judged by the treads. I think he's going to go into a little bit more of a semi carry, a little bit less of a ganking build. Yeah, they're going to need that, especially with the Void having a miserable time. They're needing some DPS for the mid game. Good thing Curly has not been stopped just yet, and they're going to need something to bring down that lone druid and the Lifester who has not been stopped either. As the smoke attempt is attempted by the rain, no wards up. The wards have all died down for the most part for the dire. Only one ward on that ancient spawn. As looks like Darkseer senses something's up, is just going to stay the heck back because he saw the rain supports are finally abetting the life steer all by himself. And oh no, fire might be in a little bit of trouble, might be just venturing out a little bit too far, and that might cost him. Yeah, um, they are going to be able to stop him after he sprints, so he should probably be dead. Oh no, he has a ward. I didn't even see that. Yeah. He's no, got a that ward. was a Radiant Ward. Oh, Radiant Ward. Yep, but Radiant right. couldn't see him. They placed that ward a little bit too late, and they're like, where's the Darkseer? I don't know. <laughs> well, they yeah. didn't really say that, but still, Darkseer did a nice job hiding himself. And so far, we're going back into the farm, but I mean, Radiant are pretty much free farming on everybody except for the Windrunner, and it's okay. She's a Windrunner. Yeah, their supports are pretty under level, though, and for level dependent supports, that is kind of a big deal. Uh, Oh, I thought something was happening top lane, but there isn't. Yeah, Void does have the Chrono, so they might want to go on Void soon, but we'll see. Yep, as Void going to go into the treads most likely, I imagine that won't be a fairy Yasha or anything like that. Too early to tell, as there might be an attempt on mid lane Linku, just playing super, super farm mode. And it looks like there are a clustering of heroes for the Radiant mid, but none of their farmers. So Dyer going to devote four heroes for this attempt, compared to Radiant's three. And if Dire don't take a tower here, that might come back to sort of cost them a lot in terms of Curly just farming up completely unhindered. Yeah, it'll be kind of hard to, um, especially considering the max rank power shot. Like, this tower is not going to go down. Oh, the mana burn. <laughs> so yep, brutal. There's mana burn. Pop the soul ring just to get that mechanism up, and now he's out of mana completely, and he's not going to have mana for quite a bit as power shot going to fly in yet again. Some scouting being thrown up in the eventual, and the shadow poison, but. Mm, Unfortunately, AL out to make too much happen, and Curly in the meantime going to apply a bit of pressure to that bomb tower, going to morph into the true form bear, as looks like he is going to gonna go for the Radiance. I mean, he could still get Maelstrom, but most likely going to be Radiance. He is farming completely unhindered, and looks like nobody's going to defend it just yet. I mean, tower still at healthy HP, but still, I feel like it would be a pretty big loss if they give this tower essentially for free. 
Yeah, that that would be upsetting when you send you know a whole bunch of your heroes to go do something and that doesn't get done, and in the meantime you lose your own towers. It's just a waste of time. Um, I would think that it's important to gank this lone druid soon, though. Uh, he wasn't ganked early at all, if I recall correctly, and he did get pretty much free farm because lone druid can last hit on a tower, unlike other Smoke heroes. Smoke gank so. gonna find a wild bear in the forest. The other bear is trying to spread away. Will Curly be able to escape? He's very very tanked, but here comes the teleport in, and unfortunately. I don't think that, no, the Ventral Stun actually was not casted, and here comes the return gank by the NA, here comes the gank, as they are going to kill off the NA, but Krilly is going to survive, but not too sure why Ventral Spirit is holding on to that stun very long, maybe was anticipating the counter gank, but I mean... It was I mana mean, cost, she used a wave of terror first, and it didn't count right. Oh yeah, 130 mana. Just a little bit too much, and I guess didn't get enough magic stick charges, because Barry not going to use a spell. But Lone Druid is going to have his relic after that near-death experience. So, even though they lost an NA, still a victory for the rating. Yeah, I would definitely count that as a victory. The biggest issue right now, though, for 4 FC is the fact that their Nyx is level 4. Um, if he doesn't, you know, actually get level 6 fairly soonish, he's not going to be able to start forcing the enemy supports to buy sentries. Because he can open on them, and they'll say, okay, whatever, I have a Bracer, that was cute. Um, so, it's, it, it's very important for him to get 6 very soon, and he's not doing that. He's just kind of sitting top doing nothing right now. And we're going to see an Aga Rush by Viper, may to give him a bit more slowing early on, and give him oh. a shorter cooldown as well. But yeah, Aga Viper, it's pretty good. Gives Plus him that 900 cooldown. range, super useful, especially since these guys, I mean, without it, it's 500 range. 900 range is just immense compared to that. Yeah, it goes to a 12 second cooldown, and against all those, you know, the the uh, the Nakes and the Syllabare, that's going to be really good. Like, you can even use it, afford to use it on the bear if you need. You're like, okay, whatever, I'll just slow it down so it can't kill my supports, can't entangle them. I really like this build. And this, this kind of just um, solidifies the fact that they picked him for one very specific thing. But there is some posturing going on top lane. The fight might break out. We'll see. One thing that is a bit unfortunate about this build is that he still does pretty much no damage at this point. He's going to be tank, he can throw on the ultimates very frequently, but he's still not going to do too much auto attack damage, which is a bit worrying considering Void has had his farm so limited. But I guess their philosophy is like, we don't need to do damage as long as you can't deal damage to us, maybe. I mean, Nether Toxin is pretty legit. Uh, just the you know, DPS you get from Treads plus Nether Toxin can do a lot of damage, but... um. Oh, Chronosphere is going to catch two as a nice telekinesis by Aerosoka, going to delay the inevitable. As here comes the vacuum, Darkseer is going to teleport up, and it's going to be a huge win for the Dire for the most part. Strang, you're going to have to get the heck out of there, but going to get time locked in place. Level 8 does have that 6 second rage, but going to get time locked again. Very unfortunate, but does Infest Creep going to pop out saying surprise like an alien, but still, oh, what a shackle shot by Nose as he is going to save the life of Strangby. But still, a nice victory by the Dire, and looks like they are on the pursuit for the Windrunner. And here comes the Viper Strike saying, I'm still in the game, guys. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, that was pretty much the worst thing that could have happened for 4FC, excluding the fact that their Nakes lived. Um, they lost three t heroes, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they lost three heroes. It's a huge amount of experience going for the supports on AL, and AL lost no one. So we have Swap Up from Venge now. We're going to have Purge Up from Shadow Demon, which was used in that fight. Uh, we're going to have a Mana Boots up too soon, so that's going to kind of counteract that Mana Burn. This is going extremely well for AL, even though Silver has got his Relic. Yeah, and he did claim that Tier 1 Tower on the bottom lane. But at least the double carries on the side of Forest Sea are still alive. They have not yet died. So that is something, but Winrun are just being constantly pressured. Not going to have her core items up for quite a while. And I imagine that Forest Sea do want to get the mechanism up, because against sort of late game, super late game scenario, I think AL does have it because they have a Void, and 4FC do not have a Void. Yeah, once you hit super late game, um, Void is just going to take down probably the Nakes instantly, and then they're going to start fighting from there. So, the issue is before that can happen, and Nakes can just come out of the bubble and infest something and get, you know, full HP. But we do have Radi Radiance is done, I checked the Courier, so the Radiance is done now. That's going to be a pretty big issue. If Silver starts coming to fights instead of just, you know, off pushing, doing his own thing, maybe that's going to give him the, you know, the extra tip that they need to start actually killing people. 
Yeah, I mean, the Dire have a mecha up, but if you look at the HP pool, Avenged, 720 HP, 700 HP on the Shadow Demon, even Void suffering with 850 HP. I mean, Viper will be able to survive, but Viper can't take down a whole team by himself. And this Radiance, it depends on what Curly wants to do with it. Either he chooses to sort of keep split pushing, keep pushing towers, and that frees up the Nyx, or he can go for fights, which can help sort of secure them advantage. Otherwise, a pipe will eventually be taken by the Darkseer, and that will definitely limit some of the Radiance effect. Yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, if we're talking late game, Darkseer is one of the best late game heroes there yeah, is. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Whoa, uh, oh he doesn't God. get the bear, and he doesn't get all the good stuff that Nakes has. Like the, I don't think he gets the life steal, and he definitely doesn't get rage, but um, he's not going to be great against the carries of 4th C, but Wall's still really good. As there's gonna be an impale onto Viper. Will he get entangled on Telekinesis? is gonna lift up Viper into the air. No <laughs> no entangle by Curly Spare so far, but it looks like Venge gonna sacrifice his life. The Rain's doing so much damage. Can Linku actually escape? I don't think he can. Venge Spare is gonna be the first one to die in this engagement. And the Rain stand is just too good, even though Viper had 1200 base HP, just died to the relentless pressure of the Rain's. And this is gonna be probably perhaps two towers. Uh, maybe Ail is going to be able to defend, I don't know, but yeah, I think Radiance, did, didn't Radiance recently get buffed just a little bit for like 5 extra damage or something? Yeah, I mean, every bit of damage does help. Yeah, and if you get it out, you know, 15-16 minutes in the game, that's going to hurt. <laughs> just a bit, as Curly going to pick up boots for his bear, finally can chase a bit better, uh, has, was just relying on the Ravage, or Rabid, as there's going to be a fortification by the Dire, and Void is going to push top but the push has been halted for a bit. And the question is, what will AL do now, now that they know that the bear is now in the picture, he wants to participate in the game? Should they, what should they do with the void? Should he just farm up by himself or should he try to be a bit more active and try to take some team fights? Well, when you have a ranged, you, when, you're, when you're source of damage, hang on, there's a smoke tank coming. Uh, yep. I'll talk about it later, but they're going for the Scylla bear. He's yep. gonna get purged immediately. Uh, there's going to be a wave, bring his armor down. Oh, Curse is gonna miss. Uh, he's, oh, he's actually doing a ton of damage with the Radiance, but Viper's here, they're just going to take him down. But wow, yeah, he kills half of Shadow Demon's health in the meantime, and it looks like they're going to try to push Bot Tower. Yep, the Dire did have a ward so they could spot Lone Druid's movement, so AL, you know, doing a nice job with the smokes, doing a nice job with the wards. Meal 4 c um, definitely the favorites coming into the match seem to be struggling a bit, but Lifestar has not died yet, and I guess the question for 4 c is when will Lifestar actually do stuff, because he can pop into the bear and say, jump out and just uh, hurt down everybody on the side of AL. But as it is, it's going to be one tower for free on the side of AL, and are they going to push in for more? Probably not. Bear's going to respawn very, very soon. I would like to see them go for mid and then Roshan after. I think they should be capable of doing that, even a fight in Roshan. They can't take it down that fast, but they do have bubble, so um, it's it's not like 4FC is going to want to fight them around there. And Void is actually really, really hurting in terms of farm. One death, only 58 CS, 17 minutes in the game. That's abysmal for a carry player these days. To be fair, it was Trion versus Trion, and he was left by himself. So it was basically a soul void versus a Trion, but it's still 1,700 gold. I mean... Probably won't go for a Battle Fury at this pace, but you might have no choice but to go for the Battle Fury. I'm not too sure what you should get in this situation. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of a fan of... Well, hang on. There's going to be some posturing top lane. The, yeah, I think they're just going to hit the tower and it's going to go down. Although there's going to be mass CPs and a Glyph, so maybe not. If you get... um, Oh, crap. What's it called? It's the mini lightning item. Maelstrom. Mini Maelstrom, yeah, yeah. If you get that, it speeds up your farming pace exponentially, but you, it also gives you the attack speed you need, which Battle Fury doesn't. So I'm really a big fan of that on Void, so perhaps you could go for that and it would actually help him in fights as opposed to Battle Fury, which wouldn't. But um, he needs to, I think he needs to either go completely for you know, team items like Mask of Madness, which I don't like as a first item on him, or go for a farming item like that and just start farming, because he's got to pick it up. You know, there's going to be a push on the top lane. Will the rain actually defend this NA not in position? And they're going to give it up for free. Viper does do increased damage to towers. Keep him out with another toxin. I'll be at a half pace. As Viper, definitely not too shabby of a pusher. And looks like Radiant might not even... Well, they're definitely going to defend the tier 2. But Dire not going to back off at this point. Sensing we got two towers for free. We can just keep going. And what will the rain do? But the question is, they're going to be fighting against a very farm lifestyle and a lone druid. And it might be time for the Dire to get back, as yeah, Void is very, very low in terms of HP. Surge is going to be casted by Darkseer onto himself to get the heck out of there. And meanwhile, the Tier 2 is being pressured by the Lone Druid just by his lonesome self. And Pandasaurus Rex. Oh man, he's going to need a bunch of damage right here. 
more Pandasaurus Rex. I know. But, um, I mean, panda on panda violence is something I never condone in any situation. There's so few pandas left in the in the wild, anyway. Well, you pandas are like useless them. animals. Like they <laughs> are too lazy to even reproduce. Evolution kind of passed them by. But uh, just a bit. Yeah. If Void, all Void has to do in these fights is Chronosphere and get the main targets, and if Viper's off on the side, he'll be able to deal so much damage um, just because they're high. So we're seeing Nyx is going to scout out with his ult, and yeah, he can't even kill supports now because he's too underleveled and the enemy supports are, you know, too high level, too much items. So he scouts out the Void, he sees that, you know, no one's defending his tower, and they're just going to take it. You know, I don't think 4FC will defend the middle tower. It's very low in terms of HP. They don't have glyph. No, they are going to TP back. They want to have the map control up because otherwise Dyer will have a pretty easy time getting Roshan. Nix but, is infested. Yep, Viper does bad. have the Aghanims as looks like NA going to initiate. Going to catch up. The Darks are definitely the worst target that AL wants to lose. Venge going to get a nice swap off as here comes the treat. Linku is going to sacrifice himself as well. Stayed a bit too long and he's going to pay for it with his life. Going to be two for nothing as... It was a tower destroyed by the Viper, but that means a tier 2 is going to be lost. And with the Viper being dead for 40 seconds, no buyback. Could potentially be either a rush or a tier 3. I think that they could go in position for top lane. That could happen, I don't know. But um, we have still have yet to see the Chronosphere used in a fight well, haven't we? Or we saw it once. Yeah, on the and top Void's, lane. Uh, Void's going to go for a Battle Fury, and I'm just going to come out and say I don't like this. It just takes too long, and Viper's still dead for another 10 seconds. As the glyph does come up, gonna buy them a bit of time. But the question is, even with the Viper, considering Void's doing next to no damage at this point, now it looks like Rain are gonna back off. But they got a lot of map control for that engagement. They definitely have a pretty easy time taking turn taking down Roshan, uh, even though they are against a Dark Seer and, and a Void. Their carries just get a lot stronger than the carries on the Dire at this point in the game. Yeah, the Snakes is... He hasn't really been in fights that much, but he's got Armlet, he's got Desolator, and he went for more of a uh, uh, AFK farming build as opposed to, uh, you know, active builds, which you see sometimes with the phase boots. But once he's got his Deso and Armlet up, which he does, he's going to be able to deal so much damage. He's just going to murder people. Yeah, I mean, the best sort of situation that the Dire could do is split push, but Void doesn't have his Battle Fury up yet, and none of the supports can we split push other than the Dark who doesn't really want to expose himself. Otherwise, he'll be in a lot of danger. Meanwhile, Bear can just split push by himself under pretty much no threat as long as he has sort of one hero backing him up, which he will have in the form of NA. So this could be a bit of a problem from AL because Void's going to have to put himself in a very dangerous position. And he still can't split push as it looks like Viper Strike was stolen by the Rubik, but it's just going to teleport the heck out of there. Yeah, that's smart when he, you know, jumped into those trees as, as opposed to, you know, trying to jump over the trees and run away because uh, Nate's come out and just kill him. Yep, but, telekinesis yeah. as well. Yeah, that's who they would have had vision. But meanwhile, Winner has finally fished the mechanism, has a TP scroll as well, checking out the items on Rubik. Ward's Arcane Boots, pretty much all he needs. Bear gonna go for, looks like AC. Leicester again has the... Oh, Shackle oh, Shot. Wow. On the Shadow Demon, Power Shot's gonna come through, he's just gonna die immediately. Nothing you can do about that, he just got a little bit greedy trying to deward. Yep, and that is going to mean a tier 2 attempt by the Radiant. The question is, can the Dire actually defend this Viper? Unfortunately, no item progression since the Aghanims. It's only been a couple minutes, but I don't think they can defend this tier 2. No, this isn't going to get defended. The issue is, are they going to defend Roshan? Um, that is the big question. I think That's they can. The they have Darkseid level 2 wall, and they have Chrono. They should be able to, but it dies so fast, and Void hasn't even TP'd yet, and he can't TP to any towers to get there. Yep, they forfeited Roshan. Um, well, they're gonna they're gonna try to defend. Void's TPing in. It's gonna take him a while to get there. Roshan but, dies really fast. They're moving into position. Um, Shadow Demon's way in the back, so we're having Vipers on the left. Oh, and they're gonna back out. Yeah, Deathslayer is good, but unfortunately, still just not enough DPS to bring it down within like five seconds, like some other heroes can do. No, like in our Ursa, uh, in the picture just yet, or in this game at all. But Radiant took a tier two for free, essentially got a kill, six to seven as there's going to be a smoked and a vendetta attempt by the NA trying to pick off a support and meanwhile the Dire is spending so much money on wards they have pretty support supports, actually supports are doing decently but they're pretty I low think, HP I think the supports are overspending on sentries yeah look at I think all that they these should be like, wars <laughs> you're going to know where the NA is um, but at some point you just have to accept that you're going to get gone on just have sentries up in the important places like where your team is gathered or where you're going to push or whatever 
and you don't need them everywhere all over the map because the NA shouldn't be able to solo kill any of the supports. Um, actually, no, Shadow Demon didn't buy any. I thought he would buy a Bracer and he didn't. Well, he should, if he had, he bought a Bracer instead of all the sentries. He would just be fine. Um, Venge has an urn. is not going to die from yeah, NA, but but still. Like you sort of alluded to, I mean, if Lester hits a support, he'll die in two hits, pretty much. If Barrett gets an entangle, he will just die. So that could be pretty problematic, but it looks like 4FC going to defend Strang B. Uh, just going to push out the bottom lane. Void is going to have his Battle Fury up uh, very, very soon. Once he picks it up from Secret Shop, it's going to be a surge forward. Purge going to be casted on the Nyx Assassin. Won't get dispelled as here comes the Chronos here. Only catches the Nyx and the Bear. So not the best Chrono, but it is going to delay the push at the very least. That's, they just oh, Venge, wow. Them. Probably. They probably forfeited Roshan with that. Um, all those two ultimates used. Oh, they're going to try to kill the bear. Keep in mind, Viper Strike being constantly casted, but the Rubik saying, I can steal Viper Strike as well, as the Rubik proving himself to be a huge menace, as it looks like most of the dire are very low in terms of mana. Uh, but at least the bear did escape for the rain, so that's very good. And Nyx Assassin is going to respawn relatively soon. We all Chronos were very high cooldown until you get to that level 3 Chrono. Yeah, so as again. is Darkseer Wall right now, and I think if 4FC push their advantage right now, they can take Roshan and AO wouldn't be able to stop them. What do they have aside from those two ultimates which can stop them from taking Roshan? Void doesn't do anything. Obviously, Viper hurts, but you should be able to burst him down. Um, I don't know. I think 4... Yup, and 4FC is going to go for it. Yeah. And this there's... Is, I, I like this decision. This is smart Dota. There's really nothing you can sort of do about this if you're the Dire again. Maybe Wall and Chrono are a bit overkill. They probably didn't anticipate the positioning of the Rain being so far back. But the vacuum is going to suck Strang B up oh. onto the cliff. <laughs> and he is going to be locked in place for a little bit. So that's All a bit it forces the, uh, if they wanted to put the Aegis on the Lifestealer, now they can't. But yeah, he's just going to Oh, die. Viper Strike. No, TP out. Shackle Shot being casted. Swap going to be used to cancel the TV, but Strangy does not care as that swap may have just cost the Dire a couple of deaths at the very. He's going to cost him the Darkseer as well. I don't know if they can defend their racks without the Darkseer. He is dead for 50 seconds. Does he have buyback? He does have buyback. That's going to be super important. But that is going to cost him at least a Venge. Darkseer is going to have to buy back right now. Does he, does he have buyback? He does. Yes, okay. Yep, and there's the buyback. Um, wall is up. We have Chrono up. We're gonna need to see an awesome Chrono on Wall just to hold this off because that is pretty much got AC, um, and that's gonna be a huge issue. And is it coming? Uh, yep. No, that's a four stat recipe. <laughs> is it got coming? Over no, just, just a little bit of four stat. As looks like the rain, not gonna overplay their hand a bit too much. They know, you know, we got the Chronosphere down up. We got the wall up. We'll just wait till the AC's finished, and then we'll push in. As, yeah, the bear is going to have the AC up whenever he wants to get it. So, Range is going to play it a little bit safe. Mule Lester, what is he working on? He is going for heart. I would get a heart, yeah. Um, Because I don't get the damage to deal with it. Yeah, they can slow him down once, and then he slowed and he doesn't hit anybody, and he just gets hit and doesn't die. And oh, Chronosphere going to be popped. They are going to get the Nyx as well as the Lone Druid. Does he have the HC? He does have the Aegis. Can the rain reinforce quick enough? Shackle Shot stunning the Void. Wall is in place. Nicely placed Wall as Viper Strike is going to be stolen as it looks like Chronosphere is going to be used by the Rubik as he managed to stun the Darkseer as all. This Rubik is putting in a lot of work. Unfortunately, Curly is going to be the next one to die. Void is going to get lifted up into the air. Vacuum is going to suck everybody back down as, man, this team fight is really, really weird at this point about Lifestealer. Does still reign supreme at this point, as it's going to be a two for two exchange, but they did lose the Aegis on the bear. So, overall, slight advantage for the Dire, but the ultimates are down for the Dire as well. That's going to be Rax. One Silver Bear is up. That's going to be Mid Rax. They can't. If you're going to use both of the ultimates on AL, and you should really use them at the same time, um, you need to get a lot of kills off of it and get something done with it. If you just kill like one person or kill somebody and then they buy back, you're not going to be able to defend your throne because Void's farm is abysmal and he can't hold it off by himself. He's going for a BKB, which isn't even going to help him. He needs damage. He doesn't need to live. Yeah, I mean, if he finds himself in a bad situation, I mean, you have Darkseer Surge, you have Disruption, you have Swap, you have all these defensive mechanisms already in place. Meanwhile, I mean, BKB, you really just need to do damage at this point, but it looks like the ultimates will be back online. 4FC just going to slow play for a bit. Creep Equilibrium not yet on their side. So this is giving Dire a lot of chances, and they're going to have both ultimates up yet again, but I still feel like, like you mentioned, Void is just severely lacking in the damage department. 
Yeah, I mentioned, I think, before that I don't like Mask of Menace on Void. This is a situation in which I would very much consider getting it. It's when you, you suddenly discover as Void, like, oh, we're going to get raxed. I need to deal damage. I guess I have to buy this. Um, that's kind of what I feel like that item is on him. Um, so he's going to push out a little bit. He might get spotted and gone on, but I think he should be okay for now. But yeah, like I said, he's even if he gets a mess. Double damage. Oh, Nixon may have something oh, oh. to say about that. As looks like Oxtro is not infested. Can Void get out of there? He is going to time walk escape, as that is very very good for the Void. But yeah, Mask of Madness, not only for the attack suite, just for the increased chance of that time walk, because that does a lot of damage. But here comes the push for the last tier two. And AL, if I were them, I wouldn't try to use an ultimate here. But well, they're going to use an ultimate. <laughs> and a Cronus here trapping everybody on the side of Dire. This Rubik, huge plays by the Rubik. They're going to kill off Void without any reinforcement. Going to kill off the Venge as well. Eris, Loco, playing out of his mind. I mean, it's not really that hard to steal a Cronus here. But at least he's not getting caught by it. As looks like Linku is going to be in a tough situation. Going to get open wounded. And he is going to get disrupted for a bit. But that is only going to delay the inevitable. They dropped a wall as well. I'm not too sure about that wall. But it won't matter as they're going to lose a Viper. They're going to lose a Darkseer as well. One in Tangle open wounds is casted. They're going to lose a Darkseer as well. As it all just came to one final solid engagement. And 4FC just too powerful. That's, uh, man. This Rubik's my player of the game, by the way. He's not, like, getting crazy steals. Like oh, he has a wall, too. Black Dang. Hole, but it's the way he's using his spells. And I don't think AL completely thought out the fact that Viper can't hide from Rubik, and Rubik can just cast it over and over and over. And um, Because he's doing that in fights, and it's really hurting AL. And Rubik even has a wall, so <laughs> that's pretty good. I mean, he's stealing Viper Strike, Wall, and Chronosphere, the three best spells on Dire consistently. This is very, very scary. And again, it's not like Viper can do anything to have his Viper Strike not stalling. It's not really like Void can do anything either. But still, the Rubik yeah. seems like a very, very solid pick against this lineup. Yeah, I like it. I was a little bit skeptical before as to why they had picked him, but it's they're making it work. And yeah, let's just do an item check. Nakes has the heart, Gesso armlet. Uh, silver has got, oh, where's the bear? He's got the assault up. Yeah, they've they've got a lot of items up. Yeah, no, just you know, a couple items here and there. Um, Aegis is gonna expire, but I mean, Aegis already died a long time ago, and Al just gonna have to try to turtle it out. I mean, they still have Void. If Four FC don't want to push in, I mean, Al is probably more than happy to let that happen. But Void doesn't even—he's not even that close to his PKB just yet. He's just so underfarmed. And For Void, go on. I was going to say, do you think AL should probably devote a bit more time to their trialing? Yeah, I was going to agree with Or may switch the void and put the trialing against the bear. I think ganking a Windrunner isn't like... It's not like you need to like shut her down or control her. She's always going to be useful. She's always that power shot and shackle shot. I don't think necessarily going to gank a Windrunner, unless your level dependent mid is like getting slammed by her, a good thing to do. And they ended up completely abandoning their Void, and I don't think this was the right strategy. I think that if they were going to go gank people, they should have TP'd the bot lane, smoked, and ganked the Silver Bear. I think they should have just switched their Tron bomb, because, I mean, even against the Lister when it was Tron versus Tron, Void was having a difficult time finding CS. So I think once they saw that, they should have just said, all right, we'll just try to slam Curly with our Void and try to do something like that. As oh, as yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, and it was even scouted that the Bear was bot... Um, which doesn't mean that he's bot, but it implies that the Silver is going to be bot. But yeah, we're going to see a Siege of this tower, and with the Silver Bear, it's just going to be hard to deal with. Does he have double bear up? Yes, he does, so that bear can be casted twice. Uh, is Radiant going to fortify the structures? Void can't really do enough to kill that tier 2 on the top lane. And Mewat Dire, do they have a glyph up? They do not. So the tower push can come in. Vacuum has not use, so that's 20 seconds without. It will probably most likely be up. Actually, no, it will be up. Yeah, it'll be up. It won't be up at the very beginning of when they're hit. It'll be up in time. And this will have to be the best wall and chrono of their life. Wall placed super defensively. Or was that the Rubik wall? That might have actually been the Rubik wall. It was the Rubik wall. <laughs> <laughs> Rubik wall then. Wall placed super offensively. Uh, yeah, and it, they're just going to hit this Rax without ever getting gone on. Uh, Void in the situation, you need the perfect fight, and he, he just doesn't see it. It's not there. He needs a five-man chrono, and it doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, everybody stinks so in. far back. And Nyx is just like, alright, I'll just dispel the ultimate by jumping into a creep as looks like Darkseer taking huge amounts of damage. He doesn't have a buyback. Here's the chrono, only catches two, and looks like 
Aerosloco gonna catch the Viper Strike onto the Void, gonna steal the Chrono as well. Aerosloco just taking control of this game. But a lot of the credit has to go to the fluffy little adorable panda bear as another chrono. <laughs> Man, the dire just like, wow, we hate Rubik so much. Yeah, this Rubik's going ham. Yep, and there's the GG's. As for FC, again, they were stuck in a group with Empire Dink Toss and they went 5 and 2. And they placed pretty well in the Thor Open and the Dream Hack, even though they didn't place in the money. But they are not a team to be, to be taken lightly. No, apparently not. Even starting with a the disadvantage, they managed to, you know, make the plays to make things work and, you know, just kind of cut the corners when their Nyx was underleveled. And eventually they just got their Syllabar Radiance and just went from there. So this is why Syllabar is a scary hero, guy. And this is why Void needs farm. Yeah, that too. Yeah. As that's going to end this cast, I think I'm going to spoil the results. I don't think we're going to cast game two. But 4FC did take game two uh, in about... 30 minutes, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I did cheat and look at the replay timer. I'm sorry, I cheated on you guys. Hopefully you will forgive me. Do you it's not just me? them you're cheating on b-balling, you're cheating on yourself. Oh no, oh no, not myself. How am I supposed to look at myself in the mirror knowing that I'm cheating on myself? As Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this commentary. Uh, Shred Kid does a lot of scrimmages. He does a lot of high-level play. Check him out on his stream, twitch.tv slash shred underscore kid. Any other shouts? Uh, no shout outs for now. Shout out to Ian, uh, shout out to Alan, and that's gonna be it, so. Yeah, thanks for watching. The streak lives on, and we will be back very, very soon with the next commentary. See you.